Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to the Muslim Converts channel. So you've been introduced to the subject of hadiths. Now is the time to take a look at some examples of hadiths. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at two of the most important hadiths of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. These two hadiths are the hadith of Ghadir and the other of the Sermon of Arafah. O Messenger, announce that which has been revealed to you from your Lord, and if you do not, then you have not conveyed his message. And Allah will protect you from the people, and indeed, Allah does not guide the disbelieving people. Chapter 5, verse 67 of the Holy Quran. The two most important sermons that the Prophet Muhammad delivered to the Muslim Ummah, or Islamic community, are the sermons at Ghadir and Arafah. These sermons were given at the end of his life. The Sermon of Ghadir was the last. These two sermons were significant as they dealt with the two major elements of human life. One, human salvation and guidance, which is what Ghadir was about, and two, the crisis of human relationships. Let us begin with the Sermon at Arafah. The Sermon of Arafah took place at the last year of the Prophet's life in 10 AH, or 632 CE. The Prophet ﷺ knew that he was departing and he foresaw the crisis that humanity was to face in the future. The sermon is long, so we won't burden you with the whole passage, but here are some key points from it. I enjoin good treatment of women, for they are prisoners with you, and you have no right to treat them otherwise, unless they commit clear adultery. And another passage from the sermon, he says, O people, indeed your Lord is one, and your Father is one. Indeed there is no superiority of an Arab over a non-Arab, nor of an Arab over a non-Arab, nor of a non-Arab over an Arab, nor of a white over a black, nor of a black over a white, except by taqwa. As you can see, these two passages, the Prophet foresaw two major crises that humanity was to face until the Day of Judgment. First, it was the abuse and ill-treatment of women. He severely discouraged and banned Muslims from mistreating women, for that was a sin and a great injustice. Mistreating women is, of course, not just in the form of physical abuse. The majority of the poor in the world are actually women. Furthermore, in most workspaces, women are paid less for the same kind of work than men are. This in itself is also a form of injustice and an ill-treatment of women. A good and God-fearing Muslim is one who treats women with dignity and fairness. The second crisis in humanity that the Prophet foresaw was that of racism. Much of the injustices that have taken place have been done on the basis of racism. Think of the extermination of Native Americans in the Americas, or the Holocaust during World War II, or centuries of black slavery. But it hasn't ended yet. Today we have people who are jailed, profiled, and discriminated against based on their race and skin color in many countries around the world. The Prophet Muhammad on the other hand was teaching us that everyone is equal and that race does not matter. The only thing that established the superiority of a person was his or her taqwa or piety, consciousness, and fear of God. The Sermon of Ghadir took place in the same year. Ghadir was a pond. The, pond, the name of the pond was Khum, hence Ghadir Khum, or the pond of Khum. At this pond, the Prophet delivered his last sermon at his farewell pilgrimage of Hajj. Preceding this sermon was the last verse delivered to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa In that verse, God said, O Messenger, I announce that which has been revealed to you from your Lord, and if you do not, then you have not conveyed his message. And Allah will protect you from the people. Indeed, Allah does not guide the disbelieving people. Chapter 5, verse 67 of the Holy Quran. The sermon of Ghadir was the greatest sermon that the Prophet ever offered, for it was delivered in front of an audience that was over 100,000 in number. This shows the significance of the sermon for the Ummah. Here are key points of the sermon. It seems the time has approached when I shall be called away by Allah and I shall answer that call. I am leaving for you two precious things, and if you adhere to them both, you will never go astray after me. They are the Book of Allah and my progeny, that is my Ahlul Bayt. The two shall never separate from each other until they come to the pool, until they come to me by the pool of paradise. Then the Messenger of Allah continued, Do I not have more right over the believers than what they have over themselves? People cried and answered, Yes, O Messenger of God. Then followed, the, then followed the key passage 
where the Prophet appointed Imam Ali as his successor and leader of the Muslim Ummah. The Prophet, peace be upon him, held up the hand of Ali and said, For whoever I am his leader, Ali is his leader. The Prophet, peace be upon him, continued, O God, love those who love him and be hostile to those who are hostile to him. Immediately after the Prophet, peace be upon him, finished his speech, the following verse of the Qur'an was revealed. Today I have perfected your religion and completed my favor upon you, and I will satisfy that Islam be your religion. Chapter 5, verse 3 of the Holy Qur'an. The Sermon of Ghadir was a pivotal part of history. What it did was guarantee a line of divine leadership and guidance after the death of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The sermon clearly established that the guidance and authority in Islam comes from two sources, namely the Qur'an and the Ahlul Bayt The first among the Ahlul Bayt to guide and to take up mantle of religious leadership was Imam Ali salam, who was to be the Mawla or master of Muslims. If one were to follow Imam Ali and the rest of the Imams of the Ahlul Bayt who were 12 in number, both sincerely, obediently and wholeheartedly, one would find oneself in the Prophet's pond in the hereafter. Until next time, thank you for watching. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.